So let's do a brief demonstration on priority optimization, or um, better known as QoS quality of service. I've got a LUN that I presented, and I'm currently um, running a workload on it. There you go. So it's a 100 gig volume right here. All right, it's got a, uh, a test file with iometer running on it. And you can see here that my average I.O. response is about two milliseconds, right? And my host is giving me about 200 megabytes per second. Okay, so we'll, we'll go back to that in a minute. Um, before we get started with the test, let's go ahead and pull up a couple of charts. I've got a couple that I saved here from an earlier demo. And this shows the host port connectivities that uh, the host is uh, currently using. We'll let that graph out. And this is the current uh, virtual volume that I'm running that iometer workload on. We can see uh, about what its current load is right now. Between reads and writes, we had about 11,000 IOs per second. Right? And then my host, we switch back to that, getting about uh, 3,200 uh, times four paths. Uh, per second. Okay, so let's uh, talk about the setup. So I've got one virtual volume. Virtual volume. There it is. Right here. It's a thin base virtual volume. Uh, no big deal. All right. Now there's no QoS policies currently written. All right, um, but QoS is applied at the virtual volume set level. So we would have to create a virtual volume set. And the reason is we can then group up individual volumes into these sets. Now you can still export those volumes individually to your hosts. You don't have to export the entire volume set that you may be uh, used to when it comes to autonomic groups. So, um, we're just going to be using this particular virtual volume set to apply QoS. Now I should also mention, mention that you can have volumes associated to more than one virtual volume set. So if you do have a virtual volume set currently that maybe you've got a bunch of two terabyte ESXi data stores all uh, put together in or maybe your database group or your uh, exchange volumes into these virtual volume sets that's fine. You don't have to change that at all. You just have to associate those to a new or another virtual volume set to apply QoS. Okay, so let me, I'll go through that. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new virtual volume set because they don't exist on this frame right now. Okay, and I'm not going to associate any volumes to it yet. Click finish. All right, so that's QoS, and let's do um, uh, let's do another one. Yeah, I'm not gonna associate any volumes to it. Oops, I must have accidentally hit cancel. Let me create that other one. Sorry about that. It already exists. It's just not showing up on my window. Let's refresh here. Okay, so now I've got, uh, whenever this other one pops in here, we know it exists. Uh, two virtual volume sets, one uh, 3PJ, demo, QoS silver, and the other one is gold. All right, so I go into QoS and create a QoS policy. Volume set, and then I'm going to pick my 
target volume set. Here's, oh, I call it three part, not three PJ. That's my fault. All right, so silver. And now I'm going to uh, specify the threshold for my IOs. And we know that I'm at least you know pushing over 6,000 IOs uh, per second on that one particular line. So let's say 4,000 is what we're going to limit it at. Now I'm not going to select host bandwidth because once I put a restriction on the LUNS IOs, my host bandwidth is going to go down too. All right, so I'm just going to apply that for now. So we've got a, uh, a policy here, virtual volume, this 3PJ demo QoS silver. And I, I call it silver because I'm trying to put my mindset in if I was a, an MSP, right, where I might want to have individual uh, buckets that my customers go into based on their required performance levels. You can also look at it again like from a uh, creating a, a dev test environment in your infrastructure and you want to make sure that they have some IO available but that they're not going to run away and, and capture a lot of the IO from the frame. So you can put those LUNs under additional restrictions. Okay, go back to <clears throat> this. And we will update the name here. That way we have everything in the same window when we're looking at it. There we go. All right. So I've got silver, uh, and that's already in my QoS policy. I'm going to create a new one. And put the frame. Target type, and now we're going to go down and we're going to pick gold. And maybe I say uh, gold will have uh, 14,000 IOs. And again, I'm not going to apply bandwidth. So I, when I do it, I look at it as kind of a tiering, that don't, not tiering in the in the uh, AO sense, but uh, when I I want to only apply layers at a time of of QoS. Uh, and I'll show you uh, why here in a minute. All right, so here's our current host I.O. Here's our current disk I.O. So now, in order to move this volume into QoS, I just need to associate it to one of those volume sets, right? And we know that volume set, uh, this volume set here, will knock me down to 4,000 I.O.s, all right? So let's go ahead and move it into silver. So I'm going to go to Virtual Volume Sets, right-click, Edit, and now I'm going to pick that volume. I think it's somewhere down here at the bottom. There we go. Finish. Back over to Reports. We'll see it drop. All right, so now we've restricted it to 4,000 IOs per second. Now again, I only apply disk I.O. thresholds because if we go to look at the host ports for this volume, look at that. All right, my host ports have already dropped. Now if I wanted to finely tune that again, I could say, all right, well, you got 4,000 disk I.O.s, but maybe I only want you to have 2,000 host I.O.s. All right, so then I could just go into that QoS policy and apply another layer, but I, you know, typically only do one layer at a time because I will, by making one change, I will affect more than just that one item, right? I'm going to affect more than just this one disk I/O. I'm going to affect the host side as well. So you have to be careful about that. Don't go crazy and start applying a bunch of rules to it. You know, try looking at it from one layer at a time. Now that I know that I'm doing about 4,000, right? Because I got four paths, I got about 4,000 host, host IOs. I can go back to QoS and say, all right, well, the silver policy, I think that that's fine. I can go ahead and say, all right, well, you're going to have a maximum of 4,000 disk IO. Oops, sorry, I'm in the virtual volume set. Let me go back to QoS. 4,000 disk IO, but I'm also I'm now only going to give you 4,000 host IO. Go back to reports here, and we can see that now it's dropped again, because it's it's four thousand combined. 
right? So my, my host IO is, is gonna take a hit. And this is why I said that you wanna do one layer at a time, right? So now I've restricted my, my hook, man, I can't talk today, my host IO here, and look at my volume IO. Again, I've affected it, right? So you have to be really careful when you start applying QoS. So I can go back to provisioning, all right, well, I know that 4,000 bandwidth didn't work out too well. Let me say 10,000, add another zero. Here we go, back to reports. And we'll start to see the performance start to increase again. There you go, quick and easy.